Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in our talks with Walt as we are calling our readings through the deathbed edition of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. We are in the drum tap section of uh, Leaves of Grass and we are now ready to take a look at a little poem, World Take Good Notice. And even seeing it laying there on the page, you can see the uniformity of the uh, five lines. It's a very short little poem. It's poem 31 of the 43 of Drum Taps. I want to remind you that very early on in Leaves of Grass, in a poem called To the Old Cause, that Whitman said, my book and the war are one. Now, I've, we, every, every one of the Drum Taps poems we've asked, how does, that, how does that little line work with the poem that we're studying? I want to remind you that I've also argued that all of Leaves of Grass, and in many ways, the heart of Leaves of Grass from the perspective of a sustained theodicy, the question of why must terrible things happen, um, has been central to our reading of Leaves of Grass and especially the drum tap section. But I also want to point out that I think Whitman was able to tap into an idea, very American idea, very early on an American idea, that the rest of the world was watching because America was somehow very special all the way back to the 1630 sermon of John Winthrop, where he argued that America would be this city on a hill. This idea, and it's in fact referred to as the city on the hill sermon, this idea I think is central to the sustained theodicy of Whitman. Not only, follow this, not only um, is America the response to the question, why must there be terrible things that happen, but that a whole bunch of people are watching, and of course we've pointed this out with that little brief phrase, let facts be submitted to a candid world that Thomas Jefferson will use in his Declaration of Independence. We've given full lectures on it elsewhere at LearnStrong.net. Speaking of LearnStrong.net, I'm assuming uh, in each one of these lectures that you've been following our stuff at LearnStrong.net, down the left-hand side, Talks with Walt, our playlist. And we've been working ever since the very first word of come, the invitation word, and I think here this will be an invitation poem, right, to the world. Um, we've given an introductory set of comments to drum taps, and we just finished with race of, uh, veterans. Now our, our Nortons, for background information, will uh, have some very fascinating uh, background information. Watch this. This poem's remained unchanged since its appearance in the 1865 drum taps, although in 1871 and 76, it was transferred to the group Bathed in War's Perfume, then returned to Drum Taps in 1881. An earlier manuscript version was published in facsimile by J.H. Johnson in the Century Magazine of, of February 1911, and it ran like this, Rise Lurid Stars, and, and, and I'll just read you the quick poem. Rise Lurid Stars, Holy White No More, Change Angry Cloth, Weft of the silver stars no more, orbs blushing scarlet, thirty-four stars red as flame on the blue blunt on the blue bunting this day we sow. World take good notice, silver stars have vanished, orbs now of scarlet, mortal coals all aglow, dots of molten iron, wakeful and ominous on the blue bunting henceforth appear. So we've got different kinds of referencing going on here to this idea of Coles 38 that we're going to see in the third line of this poem. And Norton's will finish by telling us that the manuscript version lists 34 stars, which would place its composition between January 29, 1861, the date of admission of Kansas, the 34th state, and June 19, 1863, the date of admission of West Virginia, the 35th state. The 1865 text reads, Coles 36, since Nevada, the 36th state was admitted October 31, 1864. The 38th state, Colorado, was admitted August 1, 1876. Now, in, in, there's a lot of different ways to read this poem. One of these ways is just to read it as a tribute poem to the flag, and it's usually the traditional way the poem has been read. So let's just remind ourselves that we had this use of world uh, um, already in Long Too Long. Do you guys, do you guys remember uh, this one in Long Too Long to just go back to it? Because I think it makes sense to remind ourselves, Long Too Long America, traveling roads all uneven, peaceful, you learn from joys and prosperity only, but now, uh, now to learn from Christ's um, uh, crisis of anguish, advancing, grappling with direst fate, recoiling not, and now to conceive and show to the world what your children on mass really are, for who except myself 
has yet conceived what your children in mass really are. So this idea of speaking to the world, and again, the, one of the reasons we call our, our, our conversations Talks with Walt, is that Walt himself, I mean, we learn this in so many of our early poems, obviously, Brooklyn Ferry comes to mind, this idea that Walt is wanting to speak with us, and now it's to the world, only what he says to the world is specifically part of his theodicy. That is to say, why? Why must there be a civil war? And, 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 and here we go. World, take good notice. Silver stars fading, milky hue right, weft of white detaching, coals 38 baleful and burning, scarlet significant hands off warning, now and henceforth flaunt from these shores. Now, right away, th this will be a poem emphasizing colors, and we've talked about this all the way through, um, especially the drum tap section, the power of colors. Notice he says it. Take good notice, it's, it can be read and, and often was read as a threat. I mean, from the moment this poem was read, it was read sometimes by Americans as, patrioti as patriotic, but by those outside of America as sometimes almost like a threat. Certainly, uh, the poem can easily be interpreted that way. Take good notice, silver stars fading. Again, the idea that the pristine nature of the, of the way that it once was and how everything is changing to some degree, right? We've been through the easy prosperity, now we're going through this harder part. And it's changing the very color of the flag. Milky white, uh, milky hue, ripped. In other words, there's, there's a lot of blood now on the flag, um, weft of white detaching. So in other words, the white is turning a little bit less pristine, less, less white. Coals, obviously, coloration here again, 38, and again, the, 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 uh, the Norton's uh, referencing will happen to help us there. And then notice the B words, baleful and burning. This idea of uh, baleful, by the way, is the only use in all these of grass is, is this moment. This idea of, of burning, of course, one of the popular motifs, as we've seen with fitful flame elsewhere in, in drum taps. And then notice your S sounds, scarlet significant. The red, in other words. The, the red of blood. We've seen this several poems. Blood on the ground, on the grass, red blood. Significant. Hands off warning. And there it is. From take good notice, we come to the warning. In other words, there's a warning here. Don't misinterpret what we're going through in terms of the American Civil War as an act or a show of weakness, but rather a show of strength. Now, why would we need to say this? Well, Obviously, if you're touting yourself as a democracy, and then half of your democracy decides to secede from the Union, clearly it can be interpreted by any number of outsiders as well. There it is. There's your greatest, uh, there's your greatest exhibit A, B, and C of why democracies will fail, taking, of, cor of course, taking us back to Plato's Republic and his critique of democracy in that famous declension of state passage in Republic 8. We've given full lectures on it at LearnStrong.net if you need to go back and review. Notice it's here. Hands off warning. In other words, don't, don't put your hands on the flag, right? Now, to, to give this sense of immediacy, and we've seen this several times in drum taps. Now and henceforth, and we've seen that word as well, hence or henceforth, flaunt from these shores. You'll remember flaunt taking us uh, uh, back to um, Song of Myself 40. You can go back and take a look at how that word gets used. From these shores, we, you'll maybe remember from Pioneers, O oh Pioneers, uh, through, um, through these shores amid the shadows. So we're, we're playing a game that America is standing up, not kneeling, in the moment of its greatest crisis. Again, I think this is all part of Whitman's theodicy. I think this is one of the central ideas. His theodicy goes in three directions. I think it comes to himself and to individuals. It comes to the nation of America. And then finally, it comes as a theodicy to the world. It's an explanation of all the pain and suffering, especially of the war, which is, again, why we begin with that line from To the O Cause, my book and the war are one. Now, what are we going to say about this at 2A in messages? I think what he's arguing is that America and American democracy is stronger than the war. Um, he learned from his Dante, as we've said a number of times, you don't go to hell in the end, you go through it. And that idea, I think, is central to his theodicy. In other words, now America is ready to lead. Now that it has gone through this war, in some ways I think he would argue, now that we've lost our innocence, we are ready to lead the world, and, and lead the world we will. And a warning to those who would maybe doubt America. I, to be, I'd just like to point out how tightly edited this little poem is. 
how there are no useless words. Go back and study it more closely for yourself. At 3A, we've mentioned the Declaration of Independence. Let facts be submitted to a candid world. This idea from John Winthorpe, as we said, City on a Hill Sermon of 1630, you can go and read that sermon. And I think that it makes a lot of sense to read that sermon in relationship to the drum tap section and the idea we are being watched. As Americans, we're being watched. And certainly, I think Whitman got some of this idea from Emerson, and we've talked about it already in earlier lectures on the essays of Emerson, that Emerson was that kind of stand in between. He was very cosmopolitan, he was very European in many ways, but he was also fundamentally American, and he as well was always playing that game of knowing that, at one point he even talks about kind of living in the shadows of, of European thinkers, and we're going to get out of that. I would also like to just a point ahead to Passage to India. Now as we're coming to the end of Drum Taps, I'm already ready to begin to talk about, hey, as we leave uh, Memories of Lincoln and as we get and, and as we get beyond O oh, Captain, My Captain, we're going to begin to point and gesture towards Passage to India. That is to say the celebration of the world's poet, as Whitman would sometimes want to think of himself as. And so we'll come back to this idea. Finally at 3B, how are you going to own a poem like this? Do you think that we, or you Americans still have the right to flaunt. It's an interesting question. Do you, do you take pride in the fact that you are an American? I, th I think Whitman would argue, no, no, it's because of all of the horrors of the Civil War that we should stand up and be proud. Thank you.